be it resolved. Civil disobedience is needed to force governments and corporations to act to assure our survival, specifying nonviolent civil disobedience. Point one, a world on fire. This is my state, California. The photo is entitled Apocalyptic Sunset. It is unaltered and taken by Ken Porter of the Press Democrat newspaper in August. Year over year, we've been breaking records. This is the largest wildfire in California's history. Three months later, we broke a new record, this time for the deadliest wildfire in California's history, and the second deadliest in US history. The campfire was not only deadly, it created such terrible air pollution that some 200 miles away in my home of San Francisco, for a time we became the city with the worst air quality in the world. I snapped this photo on the Muni train. What's happening? This is climate change and it's killing us. I could, of course, show more photos from even worse climate destruction from all over the globe. We know what this is. We've seen the headlines. We've experienced it. But the most critical study to date, brought about in part by protests such as this one in Paris in 2015, was released in June by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, giving humanity just 12 years to act to bring temperature rise down to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels or risk passing a precipice beyond which t stabilization may not be possible. Failure to act will mean more and much worse of the same. Extreme heat and drought, crop failure, more frequent wildfires, heavy rainfall, flood and cyclone events, animal and plant species loss and extinction, and a decrease in the ability of ecosystems to, quote, retain more of their services to humans. Climate change, the report reminds us, is a poverty multiplier, making the poor poorer and the number of people living in poverty greater. But there is a failure to act. Instead of taking the necessary action at the most recent UN climate negotiations in Poland, governments went backwards following the lead of this administration which teamed with fellow oil-dominated nations, Saudi Arabia and Russia, to push the world backwards. Why? These nations and the industries they are tied to are going to need a lot of pressure to shift from fossil fuels. For despite the brightest promises to the contrary, the fossil fuel industry has no intention of changing. Look at ExxonMobil's latest investor report. I could pull an identical slide from any big oil company. The future they predict and which they plan to provide for is this one. Going all the way 40 to 2040, the energy mix they predict is this. Oil, natural gas, coal, and way down there, wind and solar. A little blip on the screen. This despite the fact that the burning of fossil fuels is the largest contributor to climate change. And with the UN, among others, finding that from three quarters to all fossil fuel reserves must ultimately stay in the ground to avert the worst of climate's potential catastrophes. The good news, and there is good news, is that the IPCC was also clear that we can do this, but our action must be rapid and far-reaching. The shift of government and industry required seems daunting, but precedent can be found, I argue, in transformational movements, and nonviolent civil disobedience has always been key to their success. In an exhaustive review of 323 national campaigns for self-determination, the removal of an incumbent leader or the expulsion of a foreign military occupation, Chenoweth and Stephen found that, quote, from strikes to protests to sit-ins and boycotts, civil resistance remains the best strategy for social and political change in the face of oppression. When large numbers of people engage in acts of civil disobedience and disruption, even the most brutal opponent has difficulty cracking down and sustaining the repression indefinitely. They also find that nonviolence is far more effective than violence and that one of the most successful tools used by the oppressor to outmaneuver opponents is to provoke them to take up arms. Fortunately, there is a long history of nonviolent civil disobedience against the fossil fuel industry, particularly led by communities and nations of color defining, de demanding environmental justice, as climate change is but one of the industry's harmful impacts. This is from a series of nonviolent occupations of Chevron oil facilities led by women in Nigeria. This is a more recent illegal march 
like many more before it, against oil extraction in Ecuador. I could provide thousands of photos here, but I'm going to share just a few examples of the multiple uses of nonviolent direct action and civil disobedience, always using concert with other tactics. There is the symbolic act, Greenpeace literally raising the flag of resistance days after Trump's inauguration, sending a message not just to the occupant of the White House, but to everyone else out there, do not despair, you are not alone, we are resisting, you can join us. Here is an un unpermitted illegal march I recently photographed saying, now you've joined the resistance, let's demonstrate our power and bring attention to our demands, take over the street with art that tells a clear story. Among the demands of this march that Governor Brown lead on climate by moving to keep California's oil in the ground. The focus of this march is in front here, a meeting organized by Jerry Brown. Other marchers are blockading the intersections so traffic can't flow, and in the middle, they demanded and created a space within which they literally not just envision, but live out the world they want to create, a space for empowerment, support, and even fun, building the shared strength and community needed to act. These actions can call for very specific demands of government, in this case for a Green New Deal. Over 1,000 youths lobbied congressional offices in DC in December and then held sit-ins in which many were arrested, followed by this action, shutting down the entrance to Speaker Pelosi's office in San Francisco. I interviewed Jackie, doo, 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 doo. I interviewed Jackie, who told me that when she saw the action in DC, it was the first time that she felt hope rather than fear on the climate, and it moved her to participate in the action. They've succeeded in rapidly raising the profile of the Green New Deal, quadrupling the number of congressional endorsers in a matter of weeks. Then there's not waiting for companies or governments to act, and instead using this people power to shut down fossil fuel uh, operations directly. This is the largest human-made machine on Earth, a coal digger operating in Germany. But not today. A group of about a dozen people are standing in a circle in front of it, you can barely see them, and they've stopped it. Direct action temporarily halted construction of the Dakota Access oil pipeline while lawsuits lobbying and other efforts were underway. It was met with historic repression by law enforcement and private security for an action such as this in the United States, which of course was a Native American-led and dominated movement. Though the pipeline went through, the organizing built awareness about the dangers of oil pipelines and oil extraction, spawning significantly increased resistance to both. This organizing um, was extremely successful in achieving its goals. And this is a story I wrote uh, for Rolling Stone on it. Kayactivists surrounded the Shell oil rig, delaying its departure from Seattle up the coast to the Arctic. Similar direct actions slowed this and other rigs. Pressure on the Obama administration had already led it to implement an extremely short three-month window within which Shell could drill. The actions chipped away at that window, such that Shell had time to drill just one hole when it finally got to the Arctic, which was dry. More pressure led, it, uh, led to more regulation, ultimately leading Shell to leave, and Obama to implement a ban on all Arctic oil drilling, which was undone by Trump. Finally, everyone can do it. The Society of Fearless Grandmothers blockades traffic, traffic <laughs> so artists can paint murals in a mass nonviolent civil disobedience for the climate in San Francisco. Thus, be it resolved, for a climate of peace, nonviolent civil disobedience is needed to force governments and corporations to act to assure our survival. Thank you. <laughs>